what if you could market your business faster and better today, right? No additional classes or courses. Um, over the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to talk to you about how AI can help you do that um, and leverage it to make your marketing content. There's so much more that AI can do, but because we have such a limited amount of time today, we're going to focus on content creation and ideation. Okay, first up, long format content writing, blog articles. Um, it's great for SEO. It's great content for people to understand your expertise. The problem is, is it takes a very long time to write an article without the help of something like AI. So what we've been able to do is take the writing and creation of a 2000 word article, including research, and hone it down to about an hour, hour and a half, depending on the topic. Now, what we don't do is go into AI and say, write me an article about X topic, right? It just doesn't work well that way. What we do is we use it in partnership with our own knowledge and abilities um, and a multi-step prompt to create an article. So first off, the very beginning is you start with a title and article summary. Ask it to take a particular um, subject and write a title and summary. You'll read the summary. You may ask it to make changes. Um, and then when you get to a point where you like the summary and the title, you use that and say, now create an outline for a 2000 word article based off the title and the summary. So when I use the word prompt, it's really commands or requests. It's going to create your outline um, for you, make changes to it, right? If you don't like a section, you don't have to keep it, change it, ask it to rewrite a section, maybe add some bullet points. Then once you're happy with how the outline is, then you ask it to write a full article. So write me a 2000 word article based off of this outline. So two things here. One, it's not going to write the full 2000 words. You're going to have to work with it. And second, um, out of the box, you may not like the tone and the style of writing, but you can ask it to change that. You can ask it to write in a specific style of writing, in a specific tone. Do you want simple language? Do you want it to be educational? Do you want it to be highly technical? If you're not quite sure, you can also ask it to write in the style of a author or a person that writes a lot of content because it's probably, it's been trained on pretty much everybody. So if it's a business article, you could ask it to write in the style of Stephen Covey and it's going to mimic that. And that's how you're going to be able to change the, the style and the tone. And that's really going to make it a robust article. So go through the different sections of what it gave you, ask it to expand, elaborate, um, turn a, a paragraph into a case study or into a bullet point section. Um, and really tweak it and hone it to something that you would have written, right? This is you working in partnership with it, not just taking what it's created and uploading it. Then when the article is where you want it, then ask it to write a frequently asked question. I personally think that all blog articles should have a frequently asked question um, because that's what we use for search. We ask questions and Google has gotten smart enough to know that um, if there is a question that's been answered inside of an article, it's going to lift it out and then citation the article. So it gives you a better uh, opportunity to show up in search or even higher up in search. Then the next thing you're going to have to do on your own is create reference links. I have tried nine ways to Sunday to get AI to help me create an accurate list of reference links to use for the site, for the article rather. And it just doesn't do it well right now. I think at some point they'll they'll fine tune that, but they shut down that whole searching the internet. They really they didn't shut it down. What they did is they really um, put borders on it because people were using it to get free content behind paid walls, uh, paywalls. And so now it's it's just going and pulling out minute and um, detailed links. It's really hard. So you're gonna have to do that yourself. The tools that we use. Definitely chat TPT, but we're starting in my shop to experiment more now with Claude because Claude's writing is better and it remembers your requests and your commands throughout the entire chat more often. We have to go back and remind chat TPT like this is the tone and style. Um, we want this. We want that. Um, Claude just seems to remember all of that. 
So now let's talk about short form content. That's your social media, your digital ads, and then I consider image and video and voiceover part of the short form content creation process because we don't just post text onto social media anymore. Um, there's always something uh, wrapped with it. So social media co uh, content, you could create a prompt, ask it to give you topics, um, and then when you're done with the topics, ask it to write you posts for those topics or a given topic for a specific platform because it's going to write differently for LinkedIn than it would TikTok or YouTube. And then always ask it to include the relevant hashtags to go with it. With digital ads, it's all about testing your video and your ad language so that the ad platform, especially if you're using any Google ad platform, um, to hone in on the right language that gets people to click through. That's the name of the game so that you lower your cost per click. And so display ads, YouTube, the performance max ads that Google provides, you can have multiple headlines and descriptions in there. And I, I recommend you use them all, but it's very daunting to write all of those. So you can ask the AI to help you write them based off of a specific topic that you want. And it'll write you five, 10, 15 headlines. And then you can even put in your max character count. So a headline may be 30 characters max, where a long headline is 90 characters. And it, you can ask it to write for different lengths. So for image, video, and voiceover, there are great text to image tools. Um, Dolly, which is part of ChatGPT now, the pro version, you can ask it to generate images. So when we're talking about creating the content, you can ask it also to create the images. If you need something more sophisticated than what Dolly 2 is doing today, which is pretty good, but let's say you need something very photorealistic or you need to be able to manipulate it and reuse it over and over again, that's why I suggest using something like Mid Journey. It's got a higher learning curve, but you're getting more out of it. So if you're doing a lot of um, image creation for various different things, take the time to learn Mid Journey. And then for voiceover, uh, text to voice. Eleven Labs is king right now. Um, they they hit the scene. They've been um, doing great ever since. Their out of the box voices are great. Um, I really like them. But then you can also upload recordings of your voice and um, have it copy your voice. Now, it's not been released yet, but um, OpenAI is saying that um, eventually you can upload a record about 15 seconds of your own voice and then chat GPT, Dolly, you know, that whole ecosystem, you'll be able to do a voice voiceover right inside of there. So I think in the future, you're going to be able to have a chat GPT pro account and you'll be able to create your images your uh, voiceover, and then eventually your video. So text to video is still in its infancy. Um, the closest we have is in video.ai. What that does is you put your script, you put the description of the video you're trying to create, and it will source and pull together stock images and video, um, and then create a voiceover and text to support what that is. So then rather than having to do it all manually, um, OpenAI has recently talked about Sora. Um, it's not available, definitely not to the general public, not even to those of us that are like in the industry that, you know, sign up for beta stuff. It's still an alpha, but it's from what we've seen, it is true text to video, meaning you write out a description and it generates that video from scratch. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about product development. I put together a little scenario or use case here for you to help you understand how AI can help with product development. And I could, you can even use this for service creation, subscription development as well. So the first, so we're going to um, pretend to create a new Tumblr, right? Here in Colorado, we love our beverage containers. So we need a new state-of-the-art beverage container. Um, so you can use AI um, to create like a, what the uh, prototype is going to look like. You can ask for things like sustainability, durability, ask for smart features in there. And of course, it's got to be spell proof, right? This can be done inside of tools like Autodesk Fusion um, and top Topology and Shaper 3D. These are traditional design tools that have infused AI to help you with the process, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to be really, really good at these tools in order to get what you need out of them. 
So once you have a design and a prototype that you like, maybe you had a couple of them mocked up, you need to see if it's really useful and functional um, to your audience before you go into mass production. And this is where an iterative prototyping process comes into place where you do focus groups, let people look at it, ask questions, give you their feedback. But then what do you do with that feedback? That's the hard part. How do you pull all that feedback together, analyze it and come up with useful changes that's going to resonate with the majority of the audience, right? I've seen countless times where one person says one thing and it doesn't resonate with the whole audience, but we don't know that. And then a feature gets put in that nobody's going to use. So when you have these focus groups, whether it's one person, three people, five people, um, record them. And using AI technology like Fireflies.ai, you can record a video session, you can record an in-person session, you get the audio recording, but what you also get is a transcript of that meeting, of that session. Now, Fireflies.ai will give you some really decent insight on that one session. What we want to do is take this and um, pull in all the different set uh, sessions. We want to aggregate those transcripts and then have a conversation with ChatGPT or Claude about them in aggregate. Like, listen to all of these, read through all of these transcripts and give me the top five things that um, resonates with this audience about the Tumblr. What feature set? Um, what do they like about it? What would they like to see more of? What did they come up with? And then you can also ask for sentiment analysis. Did they like it? Did they not like it? Were they overwhelmed? Were they underwhelmed? Because as part of the language that they're using, the AI can pick up on that. Then you can make your changes and you can do this over again, two, three, however many times until you have a final product or service that you feel is ready to go to market. So I talked about prompting. In all of this, right, we need to write prompts. And it's important to write good prompts because garbage in, garbage out is the same for prompts. If you use a crappy prompt, you're gonna get crappy information back. So let's walk through this uh, prompt that I've created here. And really it's to generate a video script. Pretty simple, um, but it's got a lot of nuances to it. So let's start, it's a multi-stepped prompt. Um, as I talked about before. So first things first, you wanna say act as an expert marketing video content creator. Notice it's not a documentary video creator, right? The act as role is really important because it hones down the information it's gonna pull from to help and support you. Next is context, right? You have to give it a lot of context. I wanna create videos for social media that are gonna help my business grow. I wanna make my specific channel, that's what that variable is, grow. Um, and then I want to target this specific audience. I tell it what my purpose is and I tell it what I'm offering so that I get really good um, topics back. And then I give it instructions. Give me 10 video topics. I want a list of 10. I don't want three and I don't want 50 um, as a list with a sentence that summarizes what that topic is so I can understand um, the direction it's taking. And then what I like to do is list the variables out underneath of it because it makes it easier to reuse this prompt, which I've honed this prompt in. Um, so I want to reuse it over and over again, and I want to make it as simple and quick to do it. So just changing the variables out here versus typing them into the prompt is super fast and easy. So this is for YouTube. Um, you see what my target audience, my purpose, and my offerings are for this specific um, chat. Next, so created my list. And I got my topic, which is in the lower bottom right. And the list is sitting inside of here. And so now the second one is I want it to write me a script outline for a video in a specific length. And then I reference which number, um, number two from the list, number three, and then I give it specific notes. So I want a 20 minute video outline. And then the tool, and then I tell it what tools I absolutely want to include. And then I kind of, Tell it, okay, pick some others because I'm curious to see what else it comes with. And because it's an outline, I can change it just like we do with long format content writing. Um, so the key here is always request things in steps, right? Because then it can learn and grow inside of that one chat window. Don't forget to ask for correct formatting. Um, and then it, once the prompt is one that you like, you know you're going to reuse because I know I'm going to be making lots of video. Um, you create a prompt library to go and grab it and reuse it, not just for you, but for your team as well. 
you need to maintain your creations. When you start this journey, or if you've already started this journey of AI, you want to start documenting from the beginning, create workflows so that people know how everything is supposed to work and create a prompt library. And in there, you can say, go grab prompt X from the prompt library as part of this workflow. A lot of these, I think almost all of them are paid subscriptions. So you want to manage those license fees. Remember what you're paying for, you know, go for annual subscriptions where you can um, start playing with things month to month. Um, and figure out what your costs are going to be. Um, part of these, you have to download uh, pieces of software and keep those licenses updated. Make sure you do that. They have newer features in them. Um, sometimes things break if you're not using the latest version of something in conjunction with um, browsers and other things. And then you're going to want to periodically test your prompts and your systems and this is going to do two things. Avoid prompt drift because your prompt was probably written for an older version of the uh, large language model. And you want to make sure it still works when they update it. Um, might be some tweaking there. And then let's say you automate some things. Like after you write something, it automatically uploads to someplace. You want to make sure that automation is working. And then all of this is going to keep it uh, so that you're processes are streamlined. So I hope you found this information useful and helpful. Um, I share articles and videos all the time um, in my e-newsletter, so you can sign up for that here, um, or you can follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube. Thanks so much.